Hi everybody, this is Anne. When you're hand building pottery projects from templates, there are many ways to systematically go about the construction process. Most of our other hand building projects begin with constructing the walls, then adding the floor. But this time, I'll start with the floor as the base and then work our way up the walls and the rim. In this video, I'll show you my experiment with this upside down process to create three fun projects. First, I'll show you how to hand build a tulip bowl. First thing I need to do is create a template piece for the base of the bowl. I started with this round carpet tube and traced around the bottom. Next, I had another carpet tube that was smaller than the first one. I placed the bottom of this tube to the side just overlapping that bigger circle. I traced around the bottom of that one. I want to make this a symmetrical set of three equally spaced circles without any measuring. To do this, I cut the two circles leaving excess paper along the opposite side from the last circle I traced. I turned the paper over, then folded it in half, lining up the edges of the circles I had already drawn. I then folded it in half again, this time lining up the edges of the large circle so the paper is now folded into four equal parts. I cut along the lines of the circles, and when I opened it up, I had a symmetrical template piece. I decided to form this bowl inside a styrofoam half sphere. I placed the template piece inside the sphere like this. While the template was in that curled position, it was easier to design a template piece to complete the tulip shaped bowl. Next, I rolled out a quarter inch slab between two sticks and ribbed it on both sides. I traced the base template piece on the clay first and then cut it all the way out. I did the same thing with the wall of the bowl. I cut two of those. Next, I rounded the edges of each template piece with my fingers, first on one side, and then the other, trying not to stretch the clay as I went. I placed the two wall pieces to the side and rolled out a piece of plastic wrap. I placed the base piece on the plastic wrap. That way, I was able to easily lift it up and place it down into the half sphere. Once that piece was evenly settled into the mold, I placed the two walls along the sides evenly spaced over the top of the base like this. When I felt like I had it as even as I could get it, I began to gently push the seams together. If you want, you can score and slip them, but my clay was wet enough that I didn't feel it was necessary. I wanted a smooth surface on the inside, so I used my red rib to smooth it down to the walls of the mold. When it was all attached and smooth, I picked up the bowl using the plastic wrap. I turned the mold over and placed the bowl over the top like this. I peeled off the plastic wrap and sealed the edges of the bowl around each template piece. I was careful to leave the seams visible to keep the tulip shape on the bottom of the bowl. I then rounded the rim again. I placed the plastic wrap back over the bowl and turned it back over. I removed the mold and tapped the bowl to the table surface to give the bowl a flat base upon which to sit. Of course you can add feet to the bowl if you want. 
Next I use my fingers to round out the petals of the bowl. I braced two fingers behind each seam, then used my fingers to push the edges outwards. I measured the sides of the bowl to make sure they were level, then made the necessary adjustments. Here are a few variations I made with this bowl. Now make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so we can notify you when the glaze pieces are ready to be viewed in the community section. Next I'll show you how to make a cool planter. I made this base template similar to how I made the last one, except I used the smaller carpet tube for the center and this even smaller tube for the sides. I needed to create a template for the wall, so I took some string and laid it down all the way around the template to estimate the length of the wall. It was about 14 inches, but I needed a little extra length to assure a nice seam when I joined the ends. I created this template for the wall at 14 and a half inches long and three inches tall. I cut one of the wall templates out. I thought I'd experiment with a bit different way to do the attachment of the base and the wall. On a separate slab, I just traced the base template on that, but I didn't cut this one all the way out. I scored the area of the slab just outside where I traced the template piece. That scored area will be where the wall will fit around and attach. I scored the bottom of the wall slab, then slipped and scored the area around the base. I placed the end of the slab just over the recessed area along the base, and then worked the clay around along where it's scored. As I added extra length to the wall template, I ended up with edges that overlapped like this. I took my needle tool and cut the edges so that they'll match up and connect. I removed the excess clay, scored the ends, slipped them, and then attached the two edges tightly. I worked my fingers around the bottom of the wall to seal it to the clay. I then rolled a coil and worked it into the inner seam with my fingers. To make sure the wall stands up straight, I placed the tubes into the sides and the center of the planter along with a level along the top. I worked the clay up along the sides of each tube one at a time. I also wanted to add crisp crease lines along each recessed area, so I took a ruler with a 90 degree angle, placed it flat on the table and against the cornered area and pressed it into the clay like that. Then I cut away the excess clay at the bottom so it was flush with the walls. I worked the clay down along the outside bottom with my fingers so it was nice and flat. I was concerned that my straight edges of porcelain may warp in the kiln, so I rounded and flared out the top rim of the piece with my fingers like this. It still may warp, but it's an experiment and flaring out the rim decreases that chance.
Here are some other ways I approach the rim of this planter. Simone Homedale, who was a real inspiration to me when making this video, put a lid and this beautiful texture on her gorgeous piece. For this next project, I started with the same base as I did for the planter, except I folded the template and trimmed the edges of the side circles so they were a bit pointy. I took a piece of string and measured just one side of the template. I used that measurement to create this shape for the side walls of the piece. I rolled out a quarter inch slab, ribbed it, and then cut out two of the wall pieces. This time, I'm going to try cutting out the base template completely and attaching the wall to the outside. Then I use my 45 degree angle cutter to cut the curved sides of both wall pieces. I scored the outer edge of the base piece all the way around. I also scored the top of the slightly rounded edge of the wall pieces. I then scored the edges around the rest of the wall pieces. To attach, I slipped around the base piece. I then began at the center point and attached the wall tightly to the side of the base. I rolled a coil and worked it into the inner seam of the piece. I was afraid I wouldn't have a lot of room to work another coil along the other side, so I worked a coil into that other side before attaching the wall. I scored it well and then attached the wall along the opposite side. Then I used a paintbrush to work the clay coil into that seam. I then slipped one side of the wall and attached the two edges together. Once there was air trapped in the form, I could shape the piece the way I wanted. I created a ridge at the top and then indented the sides of this piece. Then I placed buttons of clay along the top. I should wait until the clay is leather hard before punching holes through it, but as we would have to get the camera back out again, I thought I could get away with it at this point. Here it is at the bone dry stage. I also made a couple other variations of this one. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you next time in the studio.